Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a place to explore the world through the lens of astrology, with a view to supporting you through the ups and downs and helping you make more confident decisions through life's chapters. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for radio's The Bob and Sherry Show. This episode is for the week beginning May 20th, looking at the regular horoscope outlooks. And it's a really busy, fast paced week. Not only does Gemini season swoop in to increase the speed of life, but two planets change sign also into Gemini, that's Venus and Jupiter. And Jupiter is extra significant as it only really changes sign roughly every year. And it's possible that with that particular sign change, we will see the cost of food and existence start to adjust as well. But also there is this magnificently crazy aspect day on Thursday, which hosts a spectacular Venus-Jupiter conjunction that is also powered up by dreamy Neptune sextiling that conjunction. This could really be the idea of bringing a more desirable way of living into existence and starting to kind of see hope of better times ahead. And I can't explain it all in just an intro because there's just so much going on this week. I'll forecast each horoscope using your sun sign as the first house point of the chart, which is called the solar charting method. And it's really the basis of what's happening for you. It's like the foundation. But if you want to get more specific, especially as readings with me are currently closed for the next two weeks for being fully booked, so no private analysis is available. If you do want more depth, you can get that from this episode alone by listening to the reading for your earth sign as well. So the earth sign is the sign the earth was in when you were born. We always follow the sun sign, but why not the earth sign, considering earth is the planet you're living on? And then there is the soul sign, which is said to be the sign the sun was in when your soul path is confirmed. And I'll mention what these are at the end of each horoscope section. So Monday brings in Gemini season. Keywords for Gemini include intelligence confidence, learning and comprehension. It's about processing information and doing so very quickly. One major key word for Gemini, which is symbolized by the whole twins imagery of the sign, is duality. And the real big message of that is to do with obsessing over decisions. Getting really caught up in whether you're making the right or wrong choice is a big thing during Gemini season. It's not just overthinking, but overanalyzing and feeling like you are in two minds about something. It's like always being in a slight state of doubt, being split right down the middle. The struggle to focus on just one direction gets really tough. And the default setting is to go ahead and consider all options. And that often gets you stuck in limbo because as a human, it's very easy to rationalize pretty much most things arming and eyeing and wondering, being vulnerable to mystery. Fear of making decisions is a really big challenge. It can be detrimental in some ways, like when you focus so much on what you don't want when making a decision, that that's the thing that happens. And this is why Gemini season is the perfect time to practice proactive negligence. Proactively neglecting negative thoughts is the focus. You do this by wondering what could go right in each circumstance you're deciding on instead of deliberating choices in front of you based off of fear of making the wrong decision. And this way you kind of create this win-win situation. So instead of writing a pro and con list, you just write the pro. You've got a choice to make. You set those two choices out and you write the pros of each one and then use that data to make your decisions. Forget the cons. Everything has cons. It's whatever right now. Torturing yourself over the idea of the right and wrong choice is a distraction from landing in your fate. And as you increase focus upon possibility, what's possible moving forward, what's possible with expansion and you know, the desired outcome, then you naturally decrease the power of the typical Gemini things like worry and anxiety and restlessness. The information you hold, that you've learnt, that you've accrued through life determines what you make of a situation. 
and Gemini season is going to heighten the experience of making a big decision for you. There is something you have to decide on during this transit. And to get a deeper understanding about this month long impact of Gemini energy, including the seven main themes and when they're going to occur, consider joining the Horoscope Vault exclusive on either Spotify subscribe for access to more specific episodes or Patreon for access to those episodes plus cool workbooks and downloads too. Wednesday, the sun, which is now in decision making Gemini, so you'll be very aware of having to choose all of a sudden. It makes a trine to Pluto in Aquarius. This is being ready to dig deep into your own psyche, your abilities, wanting to know more about yourself in every possible way. You are more in alignment and you are more for the idea to win, but to win as yourself. Or at least you want to know how it looks to win as yourself. This is a blending of power. It's unusual power with the thoughts that you have. So it's privately exploring your intellectual potential by trying out or trying on new thoughts. This might also be the power of transforming choice, as earlier mentioned, so that it's nothing but a win-win situation. And then there's Thursday. Thursday is going to have its whole own episode because Thursday is full of like five astrological things happening in one day, and that's a lot. And they're all kind of big things too. There's the Venus conjunct Jupiter aspect happening in Taurus, which the previous episode and most astrologers have mentioned that the recently happened Sun-Jupiter conjunction on Saturday was lucky. But if you want to talk about real luck and real pleasure, Venus conjunct Jupiter is it. These are like the two most favoured symbols of the solar system. And not to mention that it's happening in Taurus, which is the most material pleasure-based sign. It's just like chef's kiss. And on this same day that Venus and Jupiter conjunct together, they blend. This conjunction makes a sextile to Neptune, which is kind of a rare thing and a big deal because of how exact it is. Not only are they connecting with each other, but there's like this third influence involved. Still on Thursday, on the same day, Venus enters Gemini. And there's also a Sagittarius full moon. So again, this whole day will have its own episode in the exclusive playlist. But for the purpose of this weekly horoscope rundown, the Jupiter-Venus conjunction happening at 29 degrees and 23 minutes of Taurus is the return of a cycle in your life that was once very pleasing. It's coming back. The general feel, the repeating of a pattern that you enjoyed is returning. And it's coming back from a specific time period. It's from March 2012. And I get that it could be quite a hike to think back to Life Matters from that time frame because so much has happened in just even the last few years alone. But if you can mentally rewind back to early 2012 and think of the more amazing, enjoyable, wonderful, positive things that were blessing you at that time. Some of that recurs, but it happens in a new way. And that's the catch. It has to happen in a new way. Otherwise, it won't be so fortunate and precious and it will just end again. An abundant experience from back in 2012 that you so greatly enjoyed, but later down the line happened to lose gets renewed. And if you can plumb the source, do so. That just means making the effort to understand or discover why that was such an amazing time. What fullness were you living that was the true source of joy? Because going into the same pattern superficially, there's going to be no hope of it enduring. But this time around, you can kind of do it better and respect it a little bit more. Once again, that amazingness will come to an end with flickers of regret if you don't value it better this time round than you did then. So now is the right time to make it work for you. And the joys that you felt and lived in 2012 become a more permanent fixture in your life in this new upcoming cycle. So this exciting potential of another chance to feel that greatness, thanks Venus conjunct Jupiter, 
These planets make a sextile to Neptune, which form us two extra aspects, one per planet, Venus sextile Neptune, Jupiter sextile Neptune. But they can really be read as one kind of extra potent aspect for the sake of this episode. So if we know that a pleasant cycle is coming back around and we look at Neptune's degree meaning, which is about focusing on what is right in front of you, it's about taking current reality and using that to build your joy. Cultivate this current experience by taking things one step at a time and you will have the pleasure, the happiness, the security that you had then. And this makes a lot of sense timing wise because also on the same day, Venus enters Gemini, which offers the chance for significant life changes. Outside of the Venus meanings of love and food and money and having a really good time, this is a very kind of variety is the spice of life transit, but it is also the notion that too many cooks in the kitchen spoil the broth. So enjoy your interests. Enjoy your interests, but try not to make or expect other people to enjoy those interests with you. Enjoy diversity and enjoy everything just for yourself. To understand more in depth about this time frame and what it kind of offers step by step, do look out for the individual Venus in Gemini episode. The final big thing on this busy Thursday is the Sagittarius full moon. Full moons are, of course, the usual time of ending, time of closure, yada yada, and so on and so forth. But now I've got that generic stuff out of the way. Oh my days, is this a beautiful full moon? Already, we have Thursday as the initiator in the sequence of bringing back an amazing part of life into your current reality to stay for good. But Thursday also features this Sagittarius full moon with its meaning of showing power or just the return of power. After you lost some strength and vitality back around early December of 2023, literally just last year. If you are feeling called to do some extra work to close out that chapter, if you want to put all of that mess behind you completely with the power of this full moon, I'll link below an exercise book for you to download and work through, including prompts and affirmation and guides on the specifics of how this can be used to your advantage, why it happened, where it happened, and how much time you've got left before this cycle renews. So that link should be below. But Thursday is a trip. It's a huge, interesting, massive, busy, exciting, fast-paced trip. And it is the starting point of utter transformation in what I like to think is going to be the best of directions. And then on Saturday, Venus in Gemini trines Pluto in Aquarius, which is life and money and love and all things intensified. Which makes sense because also on this day, Jupiter leaves Taurus, where it has been since May 16th, 2023. And I fully relate Jupiter in Taurus to a cycle of expanded cost of living. Just think about it. If Jupiter expands anything, it touches. And symbolism of Taurus is things to do with food and money. Of course, some people got a lot richer during this time. And for others, it was simply that those costs of living, just money itself and food and existence and security, those costs expanded. So Jupiter into Gemini, I feel, may offer some relief in that space. It's likely to take a whole year, but the cost of necessities might begin to settle. And this in itself is just a big ingress to watch. Jupiter is the natural ruler of Sagittarius in modern astrology, and Sagittarius is the sign opposite Gemini on the wheel. So that means when Jupiter switches into the sign of Gemini, it's going to be in the opposite sign and location to its home place. So imagine being far, far, far away from your comfortable space, the furthest away you can get. It's just awkward. So Jupiter in Gemini is going to expand all of Gemini's less desirable traits. So more anxiety, impulsiveness, more two-faced energy, more mood swings, more gossip. The news is about to get super wild and even more difficult to trust, if you can imagine that. More inconsistent information, more dishonesty to the max, liars, materialism, superficiality, immaturity, and just complete 
unreliability where you want things to be reliable. And that does sound like a lot. And there are probably some pop astrologers who would absolutely gasp at me delivering the info in that way, which is fine by me because I'm not into the toxic positive presentation of things because there's just some stuff outside of yourself you cannot control. And sometimes it's better the devil you know. So of course, all of that sounds heavy and not very fun, but there is a great reason for why this discomfort is good in the end. Things have to get to their absolute worst point before they can go back to being their best. Polarity is what emphasizes the other side of anything. We know light because of dark. We know up because of down. And so yeah, stress and lies and a ton of bull crap floating around uh, for the space of a year. I'm just going to say an extra year. It's going to be increased. It's already been going on. I get that this information world we are in is already difficult to trust, but it inflates more so in this next year so that it can get handled. Jupiter will be in Gemini until June 9th, 2025. And this is the idea of everything getting to breaking point and it actually breaking. Like it breaks. Done. Fully. And because it's Jupiter doing the breaking, and Jupiter is considered a benefic, pleasant planet, the fallout turns out to be nowhere near as bad as you expect. Don't get me wrong, anything breaking is pretty annoying, but if something was on its last legs anyway, then it breaking so that it can be fixed is not all that horrific. It's really just an open opportunity for things to be rebuilt and made better this time around. Watch out for the Jupiter and Gemini episode for exclusive subscribers. It's going to detail a one-year horoscope outlook completely to do with the breakdown in an area of your life for each sign. If you are not subscribed for the bonus content access and you feel like you absolutely need that info, I'll put the link below. But without any hesitation, this week's predictions await and each horoscope is timestamped below for your convenience. This week for Aries, the sun in Gemini speeds up all of your plans. You were maybe taking your sweet time and now you just cannot move at that slower pace any longer. Whether it's forced upon you to speed up or you just get stir crazy yourself, not being able to tolerate a slow to moderate progress, all of your errands and your general life gets faster. You also become more persuasive. You use words to propel your experience forward. Correspondence, writings, text messages, emails, All things communication are now tools to make things in your life happen quicker, especially as you're likely to be a little bit more clear on what you want to move towards. So now you want it fast. Thursday's wonderful energy may be to do with a pleasure trip. Anything travel or interaction with foreign people or foreign ideas and potentials is highly favoured. And if there are any maybe legal matters in the works, they move quickly, but they also move in your favour. Your opportunity to live a rich life, to have expanded and secure finances, where you don't worry about money, is based on this speculate to accumulate theory. You've got to go bigger to receive bigger. Scaling your life bigger instead of fearing the future and trying to hoard. I know the news and media will have all these tactics in place that make you think that you have to invest in this and that, but really all you have to do is invest in yourself. And you might already be on that train of thought, spending more and enjoying it and not being very realistic about finances, enjoying money in this indulgent way. And actually, the more you do that, the more income you could attract. This is a mystical and spiritual approach, but again, it is also just the simplicity of speculate to accumulate. And the mystical side of the belief that spending more attracts more finances is rooted in concepts from the law of attraction. This applied to finances. It implies that if you believe and act as though you have abundance, you attract more financial abundance. Spending money freely can be seen as a demonstration of faith in your financial well-being, which in turn is believed to attract more finances. Venus entering Gemini supports the speedy turnover of money in and out. It's also a great time for networking and building relationships that can benefit you both personally and professionally. 
and then the full moon in Sagittarius ends a time where you felt like you couldn't expand your horizons. For some reason, from December 2023, the ability to spread your wings was clipped, and they are not clipped from this week on. Jupiter into Gemini is a year of very frank discussions. And it's also the start of a year where you might find an opportunity to study or further your training. This also points to improved family relationships and the fact that this is the year for you to travel. Really, truly. Because any travel taken under this transit may be some of the most exciting and lucky travel you could ever experience. Don't forget to check out the reading for your Earth sign, which is Libra. This will let you know more of the earthly happenings this week. And then the reading for your soul sign, which is Capricorn. It's the sign the sun was in when your soul path was confirmed. It lets you know what's going on behind the scenes. And then, of course, the most event aligned reading is for your rising sign. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Taurus. Gemini season means that you'll be concerned with things or philosophies or ideas that you value as well as with getting ahead and making money. So this is a good time to think about and assess and make decisions on your values, your income, how you make a living, and a renewed purpose in life and maybe a change of residence could spark this. You might consider things like your credit score, making a decision on getting a credit card or just something to do with general credit matters. And all of this for the idea and benefit and purpose of helping you achieve something bigger. This could also be a self-indulgent time for you. So there's a tendency to gain weight and maybe lack of discipline when it comes to rich, luxurious food. There might also be a positive reason for celebration that you become aware of during Gemini season. Spending more time and money on how you look is self-expression. And you might do this in a creative way as you play with your appearance to better represent this new version of yourself that's been emerging. You could be free of something heavy that was maybe to do with a financial contract or just something that weighed you down and is now complete or it's voided and it's gone full term. And this can mean feeling truly free. Financial negotiations are favoured or negotiations are favoured if you have any to make. This includes agreeing to a job change or a new job with an improvement in your income. The full moon closes out a troublesome chapter from around December 12th, 2023 that may have been the start of you putting your nose to the grindstone to make headway and clear up something, maybe a debt. And if it's not a debt, a connection. And this debt or connection could have been financially or emotionally. And now as you reassess all of your intermingledness, your finances, your tether to other people, with Jupiter entering Gemini, begins a year of very fast, extreme personal individual growth in your financial and values area. Make sure to get more from your horoscope by listening to the reading for your earth sign. Your earth sign is Scorpio and it's going to let you know more about the material happenings this week. And then there is the soul sign. For you the soul sign is Aquarius. It's the sign the sun was in when your soul path was developed three months or 88 days before you were born. This will tell you more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use a calculator below to find out. So this week for Gemini is a pretty big one with two planets entering your sign. Three technically if you include the sun. There's so much emphasis on everything to do with what you're doing. And this could create restlessness, anxiety or feelings of urgency. It is your birthday season, which means the solar return sets in place a fresh new chapter of one year. Make sure to tune into the future Sunday episodes where I'll start to share forecasts for those who have upcoming birthdays, letting you know what to expect for the year ahead. It's going to be most relevant for you here on in. So there's a lot of people reaching out to you and maybe you reaching out to people. All communication is just ramped up. It seems like everyone wants to discuss something with you. This is a great time for romantic progress, something like a marriage proposal, deeper commitment with a partner. And if it's not romantic, then it's in business. There's more meaning to the close connections you have in life and planning maybe a little getaway with your nearest and dearest, maybe something on your mind, even if it's something you can't actually action just yet, you'll want to plan it. You may find yourself helping people who need your help. This is very altruistic. 
very volunteer energy. And in general, all things spiritual are very potent for you. So if you have any meditative or law of attraction, metaphysical, spiritual tasks that you enjoy doing, anything manifestation based, then they tend to work a lot better this week. Venus also entering your sign suggests that an improvement in mood is possible, which is very welcome if you've been recently feeling down. And the Sagittarius moon happening in your opposite sign, aka your earth sign. It typically emphasizes themes related to partnerships, relationships, and collaborations. So this could be a time of heightened emotions in your close relationships. It's the potential for significant changes or even revelations. And it's a focus on finding balance between your individual needs and those of your partners or close connections. It could just be a better time for someone that you care about who has had a difficult time since December. And this is an ideal week for you to reflect on the dynamics in your relationships and how you can foster greater harmony and understanding. It may actually also pertain to the ending of a contract, an agreement, a lease, or the idea of starting a new contract agreement or lease in the next month or two. Some secrets kept in a relationship are so that things don't get blown out of proportion, as you might be privy to some information that the other person isn't quite ready for yet. And then there is Jupiter moving into Gemini. It's a year of luck and blessings and growth and expansion and all good Jupiter things. This does impact you directly. It's a new 12-year cycle of maturation, expanding your life. You likely just spent the last year closing out a previous chapter, very important chapter with lots of details that have left you a little bit highly strung or anxious or shot your nervous system to pieces because the last year may have brought you a crisis of sorts that made you realize it's time to level up your experience and take control of your storyline and make it more to fit your tastes. So this is about to be an adventurous and quite possibly very rewarding year. To get more from your reading, listen to the reading for your earth sign, which is Sagittarius. This will tell you more about what's going on in the material earthly realm this week for you. And then there is the soul sign, which is Pisces. It's a sign the sun was in 88 days before you were born, which is said to be when your soul path developed. Listening to that horoscope will let you know what's going on behind the scenes. And then, of course, the rising sign is the most event-aligned reading for anyone listening to their horoscope. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Cancer, the sun in Gemini is the last season before your birthday season begins, and it denotes the ending of your personal year. So you might be more reflective, looking back over the past 12 months and recapping over what the year offered you, but also what it took from you. You'll look at where you've grown, where you fell short, where you've improved, and you'll look at what you're now ready to face head on as your fresh year of life approaches soon. No doubt your perspective along with your values are changing and plans are shifting based on these new parts of you that are blossoming. So expect a lot of Gemini season indecision on what to do next. Maybe the key is that the best option is the newest development. That's what's likely to be most correct based on this up shift of cycle that you are in. If you have been sick, feeling down, physically unwell or just depressed and despondent, then this is usually a sign of improvement with those things. The people that you connect with may be a very different type of person to say those who you were connecting with a year or so ago and that's actually a good thing. New connections are necessary and also very helpful in you getting ahead. This week could also be the start of some increased acquisition and income and maybe even more invitations to join others for social or group events and occasions and your more spiritual side is showing up strong. You could be much more successful taking natural homeopathic unorthodox approaches especially in healthcare because actually toxins and chemicals dampen your natural cosmic psychic and spiritual talents and skills so clean eating avoid additives all that nasty stuff so you can really rely on your spirituality with venus entering gemini the key to receiving abundance is that you are offering services and efforts that assist or help more than just yourself. If your goals are purely self, because you want stability for you, and that's kind of where your thoughts end, then success will elude you. There has to be an extra thing or another group 
that you are trying to assist when you are approaching your objectives. The Sagittarius full moon closes out a health chapter that was a struggle or a conflict or even a crisis that began to get heavy around December 2023. This is mental and physical health alike. Things may have got really tough around then and they start to ease up more this week. You'll get some really good advice from others if you listen intently. Being willing to learn from people you connect with can offer valuable tips for progression. Jupiter moving into Gemini brings benefits from soul searching and self-examination. The more otherworldly esoteric truths and exercises that are geared towards growth can turn things quite beneficial. And there may be somebody who shows up to guide you. There may be some kind of guide coming your way. This could include somebody already in your life that acts as the perfect, almost guardian angel, saving you from making mistakes, or they act as a support type energy. And Jupiter in Gemini just really means that the more spiritual your approach to everything in life now, then the more protected and positive your adventures will be. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your Earth sign Capricorn. This is used in human design astrology. The earth sign is the sign earth was in when you were born on it. It's important to not discredit the horoscope reading for this sign because it tells you about the earthly developments, your earth sign being Capricorn. And then there is the soul sign, which is Aries for you. The reason the soul sign is relevant is because it is when your soul is said to have entered your body before you were born. This happens 88 days before your arrival. This is Mercury's final rotation around the sun before you are born, kind of winding up and turning on all of the systems, hence why it's so important. And listening to your Aries soul sign reading is going to let you know what's going on behind the scenes. And then, of course, there's the reading for your rising sign. The rising sign is the more event aligned reading. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Leo, decisions around your ultimate goals can be quite difficult to figure out because there are so many potentials and you're almost spoiled for choice of which way to go in life. This aligns with how much your sense of identity is changing, it has been changing and it will continue to change thanks to Pluto moving through your opposite sign. These changes are occurring thanks to your connections with other people and it's other people who profoundly shift your perspective by enforcing their experience on you or trying to control you or trying to support you in a powerful way that's an option too this does include any new love relationships that show up or existing ones that are still quite fresh and if you're single this might mean just somebody brand brand new and very powerful coming into your life and for those who are trying this can also indicate conception but outside of new relationships and fertility this is a favorable time for promotions at work for being employee of the week, for being seen by your boss and superiors much more clearly. If you're in a creative type of career, you might want to make the most of this beneficial week and advance your projects and goals by going headfirst and focusing on them. If you are not already partaking in some kind of creative hobby, you may discover a talent, particularly for music or for writing. And if you do reveal a new talent, it might be worth joining groups that help you cultivate that skill. Because in doing so, you'll find some amazing new friends. And in the very least, that just makes this a great time to socialize. The Sagittarius full moon ends a problem that began around December 12th, 2023, to do with you taking a risk, maybe a second chance on something or someone, or it may have involved investments or just romance somehow, or you not having enough time for recreational activities. And the second chance and the investment or the romance or the lack of recreational activities did not work in your favor. And that whole experience comes to an end this week. All the new connections showing up do prove important in advancing your career now. And really when Jupiter moves into Gemini, the benefits it offers come from working in collaboration with others on mutual goals. So the more you work with people, it seems like the more you will be rewarded. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the earth sign. The earth sign is the sign earth was in when you were born. It's commonly used in human design astrology and it helps you understand the physical developments going on in your week. 
your earth sign is Aquarius. And then there is the soul sign. Your soul sign is Taurus. It's the sign of the sun was in 88 days before your arrival, which is said to be when all the lights and the consciousness started flickering on and your soul path was fully confirmed. Listening to the reading for your soul sign Taurus is going to let you know what's going on behind the scenes. And then the most event aligned reading is for your rising sign. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. So this week for Virgo, a decision with your career could be on your mind all month long, going back and forth regarding a choice that you might feel like you have to make. It feels very, very pressing to do with your professional life. Remember to use the pro and pro list method. Don't list any cons, just list the pros of both options, because whichever way you go, you're going to win. It's just going to be a different kind of win, depending on the conclusion you come to. And whatever you settle on, no matter how many people seem to be against you, it doesn't matter. You could care less. And that's the perfect way to approach this. Healthy detachment and trust of the perfect outcome is the way. You may have a few new ideas about redecorating your home, improving your home. You may even need to work on stuff to do with the home due to some kind of water pipe issue or some similar matters. You may just be feeling more sentimental than usual, more of a homebody, more connected with family, or feeling ready to heal. When it comes to the formal side of things, anything paperwork related works in your favour. And a general boost of wonder about exploring a new location, going on vacation because of all the stuff that you've had to deal with, all of the detailed stuff, may be on your mind. You possibly feel like visiting more exotic locations for fun, for recreation, just a general exciting vacation that's being planned because you deserve it with everything that you've been dealing with, with all the hard detail work of the last few weeks. And if travel is not a possibility, you can channel this energy into creating or publishing something of a very high-minded nature. Practice or indulge in more writing exercises and classes and consider exploring more spiritual or philosophical concepts reading books and different ideas and beliefs if you can't physically explore the world. Then just explore via your mind. With Venus in Gemini, your positive vibrations in a work respect could see you receiving some thanks for your creative input, or you just get requests to share more of your ideas to help people out. And for some Virgos, this is going to be like being in love with your job, reigniting love for your job, or finding love through your work. The Sagittarius full moon closing out a crisis from December 12th, 2023, maybe to do with some work that you've been doing on a home or family based problem. Again, whether that's healing from childhood trauma or dealing with home related renovating issues or just general property matters, shifts in living arrangements that were not favorable. The stresses and impact of a home related situation begins to settle and turn in your favor this week. You may also have a few weird and wonderful dreams when you wake from the morning wondering what the heck you just thought of in your mind while you were asleep. So note them down if you want to and even search for what they mean in your preferred search engine. And then the biggest shift this week, Jupiter into Gemini, offers expansion professionally, but it's not going to come easy. The stressful tension of Jupiter's beneficial outcomes in the uncomfortable sign that it's in with Gemini means yes recognition and career growth is possible but also a lot more work lands on your plate too but you know it comes with a boost of confidence some job related like a growth spurt and in the end it turns out to feel really good as you prove yourself beyond capable more than anyone would have thought receiving recognition that you truly deserve. To get more from your weekly horoscope, consider listening to the reading for your Earth sign. Your Earth sign is Pisces. It's the sign the Earth was in when the Sun was in Virgo. And it lets you know more about the earthly developments, the material developments happening this week. And then listen to your Sol sign reading, which is Gemini. This is the sign the Sun was in 88 days before you were born. And that time frame is said to be when your Sol path is confirmed. All the lights switch on and everything starts to power up. As you become a conscious being, listening to your soul sign Gemini is going to let you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then there is the most event aligned reading you can listen to, which is going to be for your rising sign. 
And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Libra, your Gemini season decision and deliberation may be to do with travel or study or just maybe taking a more spiritual approach to life. It's the mentally stimulating things that are going to be the most pleasing to you right now. And travel covers that because of the cultural element or just traveling to somewhere you enjoy. Just anything really that gets the mental juices going as long as you're studying something or doing something again that you enjoy. There may be a decision to make about telling someone something, telling someone the truth. You may get your mental teeth into deliberating that over and over again. And you might even be concerned that not telling someone something is going to be detrimental or negative. This could be to do with a close friend going through a period of struggle. And maybe you know something that you feel they should know and you don't know how to tell them. But if you do decide to share whatever you have information wise with whoever needs to hear it, it seems like doing so on or around Thursday results in the more pleasant of outcomes. This is when everyone and everything is more receptive to you in your perspective. Outside of you searching for travel or you searching for information or just an information exchange, there is this idea of you getting gifts or rewards or just being showered with pleasantness from others. Maybe someone buys you something expensive or something that you really like and you feel this greater, deeper sense of connection with those around you. Venus enters Gemini suggesting that you meet people who are different from your usual group and you'll enjoy these unusual new and different things and new and different people and what they bring to your experience and how it expands your vision of life. You'll enjoy every minute of novel foreign encounters. This includes a love for foreign travel, so it's a great time to plan a vacation or go on a vacation. Or it's maybe love with a foreign person if you are single. The Sagittarius full moon puts an end to some troublesome paperwork or a nasty conflict-based conversation that you experienced in December 2023. And Jupiter moving into Gemini is a good time to start writing if that is a skill or a talent in your toolbox. Or it's a good time to study and get into metaphysics and things like law of attraction. It's a very open-minded kind of transit where for a year you can use very spiritual concepts to bring more abundance your way. And it does last for just over a year of broadening your scope and maturing your experience through encounters with that which is unusual and different and the more interesting details and concepts of life. It's like the more you are exposed to out there things, then the more potential your future has. And that becomes super exciting. To get more from your weekly horoscope reading, consider listening to your earth sign. The reading for your earth sign lets you know what's going on in the earthly material realm. It's the sign earth was in when you were born and the sun was in Libra. And for you, the earth sign is Aries. And you'll want to listen to the reading for your soul sign too. Your soul sign is Cancer. It's the sign the sun was in 88 days before you were born, which is said to be when your soul path developed. Listening to that is going to let you know what's going on behind the scenes. And then there's the reading, which is the most event aligned. It's going to be for your rising sign. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Scorpio can signify the start of some trouble. This is health issues that are possible from extra efforts that you're putting in or from some internally originating stress. The duality of decision is really to do with how you handle the stress, whether you do so healthily or unhealthily. Part of the stress is that you could find yourself more concerned with finances, particularly joint finances or debts and things owed or just outgoings. You will be more in touch with your feelings and if those feelings are not handled well, it could create a deeper level of discomfort. There should be more energy towards self-contemplation. This definitely helps handle the feelings. Managing your psychological and philosophical beliefs can help you feel less impacted by all of the inner tension. And you might become morbidly obsessed with all different types of endings and generally worried about loss. This might drive you in an insatiable way. And suddenly your ambition to get ahead is stimulated. And if you don't find that to happen organically, it's that more power is just thrust upon you instead of you seeking out the power yourself. And by Thursday, it seems like it's a lot of worrying for nothing because your financial picture receives a positive boost, even if only temporary. And if it's not a boost, then maybe you just go on a nice 
spending spree that's warranted and enjoyable. This is also kind of a beautiful time for deepening relationships, marriage, business, for strengthening contracts, and feeling a lot of increased harmony in your partnerships. This may even indicate the start of a new relationship, if that's relevant. And Venus moving into Gemini is about becoming a money magnet, or just a magnet to anything that you consider will bring value to your experience. This is also about attracting very intimate situations where you blend yourself seamlessly with another. So this could also be heightened libido as a possibility. And it's also a time of secrets revealed that are quite pleasant in nature. The Sagittarius full moon ends a time of difficulty with finances and values. It might be as simple as replacing something that's been broken since December 2023, and it costs, but it's worth it. Or it might be that this full moon realisation is that things are better financially and value-wise and security-wise than they actually seem. So you get to take a breather. And then the year-long transit of Jupiter through Gemini which makes this week a really interesting, special time, makes it very good for you to think about credit, lending and borrowing matters. It could be the repayments on something that increases, but while that initially seems annoying, it just means that you'll be done with the commitment a lot sooner. So don't hate on any expanded transactional change because it may be working out in your favour in the end. And to get more from your horoscope, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. Your earth sign is Taurus and it's going to let you know about the material, worldly, earthly developments of your week. And then there is the soul sign. For you, the soul sign is Leo. And this lets you know what's going on behind the scenes. And then the most event aligned reading for you is going to be for your rising sign. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Sagittarius is the start of many, many big shifts for you. This is the week that a whole bunch of planets move into your opposite sign and starting with the sun into Gemini. It makes this a great month ahead for collaborating and working in harmony with others. This is good for considering alternative options, but getting those options from people who you are close to and who you trust, that you know well. All of the advice that you receive this season, whether personal or professional, is worth taking on board more than ever because it opens your mind to endless possibilities that you maybe hadn't considered before. If there are any paperwork stuff or legal disputes or stuff that you need to get done, like homework, things you've got to catch up on, you get a good footing on that or you get some great advice with that. You learn a lot more about yourself this month, but the way that you learn is through the reflections and projections you experience of your own actions through the people you connect with, which can be rewarding as you find others being fair, helpful and interesting, which reflects those things about you. And it's through your connections with others that you learn something new this week that changes your perspective massively. Discovering something about yourself or about life that you've never been aware of before. And then Thursday's aspect filled day may give you this chance to indulge in yourself, to treat yourself, to buy something nice or just to enjoy the more indulgent pleasures that fit your tastes. There may also be some new fresh faces or energy at work or a fresh dynamic, new friendships and closer bonds, which can contribute to less stress even when there are challenging tasks to handle. It makes things easier if everybody gets along. And the really interesting part is that you become more interested in the spiritual side of life. The idea of using metaphysics and manifestation and law of attraction and all of those things to really create your own experience. Venus enters Gemini and it favours all partnerships. Any intensity that the sun brings to your connections, Venus is going to make it worthwhile and full of reward and desirable returns. Difficult things get settled very easily. And there is a boost in love matters, whether you are single or currently involved. The Sagittarius full moon is very personal. And it's a general experience of personal life crisis where life didn't feel good at all. This may have started back in December of 2023 and now it switches up. It's the end of a personal struggle, which is probably quite welcome. And you get to see your part in making that positive turn happen. And then the big year-long transit of Jupiter into Gemini means that the more you pay attention to detail, the more favourable life becomes. The gift is in the details for approximately one year, or just over one year, until June 2025. And it's a great time to go looking for the details, to seek more knowledge, to seek the whys, the hows. But it's not just any knowledge. Be careful of what you believe when it comes to the media and what you trust 
when it comes to information in the news and those kind of streams. It's really what you learn from people directly, people who mean a lot to you, that's the most important. This is the transit of the school of life, and you learn more in this year than you have ever learnt in any educational facilities or experiences combined. And if you want to get more from your reading, consider listening to the horoscope for your earth sign. Your earth sign is Gemini, and listening to that is going to let you know what's going on in the material developments of your week. And then there is the soul sign. For you, this is Virgo. It's the sign the sun was in 88 days before you were born, and it kind of lets you know what's going on behind the scenes because it pertains to your soul's development, the moment when your soul path was confirmed. And then the most event aligned reading is going to be for your rising sign. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Capricorn, Gemini season brings your attention to work, which is a big surprise. <laughs> And I say it's a big surprise because Capricorn is the hardest working sign on the wheel, but this just means that this season you're even more interested than usual to make things happen and to improve your professional sphere. And in astrology, work and health go hand in hand. So you've got to be healthy to be able to work successfully. So you may be more concerned with taking care of yourself in a more detailed way, making decisions about self and health care. And the key is to enjoy this development. The satisfaction that this offers is success. So try not to worry about the decisions to do with work, because no matter which decision you make, you are going to gain from it. You do have to deal with some family issues that become focus, family matters that seem stressful, or maybe they are to do with superiors or important people and regulations. And Thursday's busy day starts a fresh cycle where you may allow yourself to catch up on rest. You may allow yourself to prioritize health, understanding how important it is to your success. Usually, back in the day, that may have come last, but from here on in, you need to put it first. Prioritize rest and finding inner peace this week. This is also an excellent time for love and romance and relationships, and also maybe investments. They seem to work out better than you expected. And it can be a very freeing and creative time. You feel comfortable in taking a more unusual approach to handling business. If you are single, you could meet a new love in your life. Or if you are in a relationship, you realize that your person is the perfect match. Venus enters Gemini and pretty much all of your work dynamics improve. All things work are favored. There's more money, more gain, more security, more potential. And your health seems to be positive as well. Everything practical goes in your favor. The Sagittarius full moon puts an end to any creeping thoughts that may have been at the back of your mind or holding you up or holding you back. It's those negative and bad habits and behaviours that you have that undermine your own efforts. And this is kind of a coming out of your shell full moon for you. One where you now begin to feel more like yourself again after having been stuck in a bit of a black hole of uncertainty. You kind of emerge from being deep in your dark side. The week's big shift of Jupiter into Gemini gives you a lot more work to do. Of course it does. You won't receive recognition for everything because there's so much on your plate, but you will have this sense of personal satisfaction and others are going to notice your efforts even if they don't comment. And health matters expand. If you are in good health, this might become very, very good. If you are in poor health and neglecting yourself, then your body may start to cry for attention. You could also put on weight weight gain is a possibility. And this is especially prominent if you don't use the idea of moderation. And if you have been sick, this could indicate the start of getting well. Overall, your performance is spectacular and your activities are increased. Thinking needs to be more meditative, so don't try and switch off your mind. Instead, try to enjoy the concept of dealing with thoughts and enjoy the idea that thinking more offers you more. Don't try and switch off your mind. Yeah, take some downtime when you need it, but activity really is your biggest source of growth and satisfaction. And the more you lean into that, the more you are rewarded. Consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign the earth was in when you were born on it. For you, this is the sign of cancer and it's going to let you know more about the material happenings this week. And then there is the soul sign for you, that's Libra. It's the sign the sun was in 88 days before you were born. 
which is said to be when your soul path developed. And it's going to let you know what's going on behind the scenes. And then there's the reading for your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Aquarius, there's a decision to be made romantically. If this is not about a romantic decision, then it's about the decision to choose more fun in your life. Life is about to be pretty heavy for your sign for a very long time, thanks to Pluto going through Aquarius for the next bajillion years. And if you can't enjoy this experience, or you can't find pleasure, then it's going to be tough. It's really important for you to start choosing light-hearted experiences from this week on, and among all the heavy stuff, because you still deserve to enjoy it yourself. Someone you are connected with may be going through a life-changing experience, and it's your nature that lifts moods during this time. And when Thursday's aspect full day comes along, it starts the cycle of new social connections that expand your networking reach. You meet with and connect with much more formal and important and special and interesting people. And you want to connect more with these types. If you find that you are not pleasantly stimulated by your social situation, then you may seek to be somewhere that satisfies that, which could include moving. Moving may actually be something that's quite heavy on your mind right now. And there's a quick question. Did you move or change living locations around 2012? Or were you connected with really fun, unique people? Because now this cycle restarts. You seek the ideal environment that fits who you are in the present. You want more spiritually inclined friends or more artistic types to be around. People who bring up the fun and pleasure and softness of life. Venus enters Gemini, bringing the potential of love into your experience. Increased love, new love or just getting involved in projects that you love. You connect well with your loved ones. This is a good time to just prioritise recreational activities with others and going out and having fun. Your personal life may be in a state of upheaval. It's going through all kinds of change. And this is for the purpose of having a deeper meaning to your life experiences and feeling a sense of belonging. The shift of Jupiter into Gemini brings a lot of positivity back into your activities and this could indicate the start of an intimate relationship or the increase of intimacy in a current relationship either way it's going to be rewarding and the more you feel this intimate support it breeds self-confidence in such a strong way like you've never had before this is about being proud of yourself this is about not being afraid to show that you are proud of yourself and this is a time of personal growth through having more fun experiences and not feeling guilty about it To get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. Your earth sign is Leo, and it lets you know more about the weekly material developments. And then there is the soul sign for you. This is Scorpio. It's going to let you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And the soul sign is just a sign the sun was in 88 days before you were born, when your soul path developed. And the most event aligned reading is for your rising sign. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Pisces, Gemini season offers a decision to be made at home. You may be contemplating and evaluating your living and family surroundings, the arrangements. You may understand more about how your actions come from your childhood conditioning. And the choice is whether to continue in that theme with that conditioning or to choose a different approach. You may be working super hard to get ahead in life right now maybe even too hard. So just be careful to get some rest. You shouldn't push yourself too far by trying to be too many things at once. Thursday's intensity is a little bit more of a pleasant dynamic in your professional area, which isn't necessarily an amazing thing. It could be that work has actually been so terrible that even the slightest improvement feels nice. But it could be that things just get better somehow and your mind may wander to more pleasant things like travel and education, now that work chills out a bit. You could also be expecting a friend to visit from out of town, and that may put a smile on your face. If there is something that needs to be said, then this is a good time to express yourself in words, especially if that is to relatives. And having less worry about work may allow you the mental space to do that. Less worry about work in general may actually turn out to be less ambition with work and more focus on family and other situations. You may even be so relaxed about work that you are ready to resign or to pursue other objectives. And if you do that, that turns out to be positive. Venus enters Gemini and a new addition to the household. Might be something like a fancy or luxury new purchase. 
necessity or an appliance for you to enjoy. This might even inspire you to decorate the home a little bit more. But just be cautious of going overboard because you might make choices in decorating the home that you later feel are not quite to your taste. The Sagittarius full moon is still about the work-life balance and it's about ending conflicts or problems there. Maybe a truth comes out and it settles the field or just some kind of other solution to a problem that's been ongoing in your work realm since December 2023. Something where relationships with colleagues have been unequal gets put to rest. But this happens through something intense and some direct communication either from yourself speaking with a sharp tongue or another person doing so. The big transit of Jupiter into Gemini for the next year is an increased focus on family and home down to the most finest of details. Your home's value may increase. Your family environment may grow somehow. There might be an addition to your family. There might be more support that comes in the family area. Although there is the chance of some growth of pettiness among family members too. It could be that an existing problem gets cleared up and some developments of relief between family members who haven't been getting along is welcome. It's a great time for enjoying and digging deep into your family history or just simply being more of a homebody. There are letters and correspondences to be expected about your home and living arrangements arriving much more frequently over the next 12 months. And there's even some unpleasant home developments that happen in order to straighten the path going forward. Things breaking and going wrong in the home to force you to fix them. And if you want to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. It tells you more about the material developments this week and your earth sign is Virgo. And then there is the reading for your soul sign. Your soul sign is Sagittarius and this is the sign the sun was in 88 days before you were born. It's going to let you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. So that is it for this week's jam-packed forecast episode. Check back in for the Gemini season rundown, plus Thursday's full analysis, and then the year ahead horoscope for each sign based on Jupiter in Gemini. Until then, bye! (laughs) 